Groovy. Welcome to Horror After Midnight. I am your host, Casey, joined tonight by Saw Guy. How's it going, man? Doing pretty good, man. Thank you for having me back on. And I see you brought my wife again. Yeah! Throw it up! Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, of course. Got to have her here. Oh, uh, man. Here to talk about the original Annabelle. Um, following up the story comes right after Annabelle creation. Um, oh, man. Of course, we got to talk about Annabelle. She is the lady that we got to talk about tonight, man. She's a special one. Because the first Annabelle film... Uh, this actually came out right after Conjuring. And the reason being is because with Conjuring, it was so good. Everybody wanted a sequel. But, you know, the studio was like, no, 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 no. We're not going to give you Conjuring 2 yet. We're going to give you the prequel of how it built up to the Conjuring. And this is before they decided to do a whole universe of everything. And they said, let's make a full-on movie on Annabelle. And when they decided to do that, um, they gave Annabelle her whole backstory and everything. And they released it on October 3rd of 2014. Kind of fitting because, you know, it's got to fit in with Halloween and stuff. The numbers, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's crazy with these numbers, man. I was looking them up right now. It had a budget of $6.5 million, right? And it took yeah. home $258 million. Holy shit. Like, That's they, insane. Yeah, I mean, you got a franchise. You got a universe um shit i mean marvel eat your heart out because there's conjuring coming after you <laughs> yeah that's basically like um they know they have this one like awesome movie and they have these other stories that are built into it and they can basically just make all these different spinoffs and make fucking what do you say 200 million off of it yeah two 258 <laughs> yeah. Woo. yeah they're like why not let's do it yeah, and holy shit, man. And if it wasn't for Annabelle, we would not have the Conjuring universe because this is where they were kind of dipping their toes in the water. They wanted to see how well it would go if they, like, branched out. And with the whole thing with Annabelle, that really started, like, the whole universe because later after Annabelle, they did Conjuring 2. And what happened after Conjuring 2? They made The Nun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Nun, uh, that sparked from, yeah, part two of The Conjuring. And, yeah. Um, in the last film we talked about, there was one part I did forget to mention. There's a part where the uh, sister or nun that's in the um, Annabelle creation are looking at a picture with the guy there. It shows a few of her friends. But if you look into the far right, you can actually see a picture of the nun there also. So it kind of like ties it all together. Oh, shit. I forgot about that scene, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how they tie it all together. Like each one somehow goes in. Like I wouldn't have thought that they'd put the nun in there with Annabelle, but. But, you know, that's a cool little winks. And that's what I love about James Wan. He's all about throwing in winks on this. Um, I don't know if you've ever caught the interview or anything, but he did an interview and he was talking about how the whole story of Annabelle came about. And Annabelle was included in The Conjuring because when he first did Dead Silence back in 2007, um, if you've never seen Dead Silence, go check that one out because that was one of his other great ones that James Wan did. But what sucked yeah. is that they didn't promote the film and it came out the same day as 300. And everybody went to go see 300. No one saw Dead Silence. And as a little wink to what they did, um, James Wan, he was like, okay, well, everyone kind of forgot about Dead Silence. And then when they discovered it finally, like four or five years later, um, he decided, okay, I'm going to put a little wink out there. And that's how the whole concept of Annabelle came about, like the way her look is and everything. Um, yeah. Because they couldn't use the original doll, which was a Raggedy Ann doll. And, I mean, as creepy as that doll is, <laughs> um, James Wan found out a way to make it even creepier, you know? Um, oh, yeah, it, yeah. The Annabelle doll is very creepy looking. Yeah. And what's crazy is that, like, when the first time you see Annabelle, you see her for five minutes in the first Conjuring film. And it leaves you to believe, like, okay, they're going to talk about the doll. Um, they talk about it for, like, another minute or two. You see her behind a glass and everything like that. And then they just left it. But what was cool, they planted the seeds to do this film, Annabelle. And I freaking love this film. Um, I mean, this is one of those films that either you love it or you hate it because of the fact of it's so different from all of them because it's an origin story. And yeah. as I said through this whole franchise on these reviews, you can't have the sequel without the prequel. And anytime you do a prequel, you're going to have to talk, do a lot of the talking and explain, of, okay, what happened with Annabelle? How did it start? But this one was really different. I mean, you know, what did you think of the beginning of it? 
Um, it was really good. I mean, the whole movie, but it's definitely um a lot slower. Um, nowhere near as intense as creation was. Um, but the beginning there, you had basically how the end of creation ends basically with the girl that gets possessed and changing her name to Annabelle, I guess, because it showed up at an orphanage or whatever, but she gets adopted by this family 12 years later, kills her parents. And then that's basically where this story for the first Annabelle leads off, where you have uh, the girl that was possessed from the last film, her boyfriend, almost like this cult-like thing that kill her family, which is right next door to the main family of the film, the uh, husband and wife that's pregnant. It's really cool how they tie it all together. Yeah. And just how the girl was like freaking creepy where she's like, I like your doll. <laughs> um, you know, I thought that scene was very powerful and I think it was scary to me, like real intense scare because, you know, you think about it, it was late 60s when the timeline was kicking in. <laughs> Didn't they have a vibe where it was talking about Charles Manson? I mean, did you get that vibe where they killed her because she was pregnant? Yeah, yeah, I did get that, and kind of crazy, because in the movie, the uh, pregnant wife is watching, like, a documentary about this, or maybe, it might have been just, like, a news thing or whatever, but it was about the Manson family, so it's kind of crazy how it all, like, went together like that. Right, and, you know, the whole premise is that they were, it, this movie was taking place in uh, Santa Monica and Pasadena area, which is where everything was going on at that time, too, and it was like, holy shit, um, I, I appreciated that whole wink to it because now they put a real timestamp to it. They put some realism into it. Um, and any time yeah, you put yeah, realism, one, uh, I believe it takes place in 1970. So it's like right there at the end of the 60s. I'm pretty sure it's 1970 where this one takes place. Yeah. This was, I, I love the timeline in this one, man. And, and the way that they put everything together from the cars, the look, everything. I thought it was like freaking phenomenal, man, for just that whole 70s look. Um, storyline wise, and this is the main reason why this movie gets so much flack and you said it best is that it's really slow. It's methodical. I would say, you know, if Slink was here, I tell him like, Hey man, like this is kind of like up your alley, man. It's like a, almost like an American Jallo in a way. It, it's got that little taste into it, but not a whole lot. Would you say? It's definitely like a slow burn for sure. I wouldn't really say Jallo. Um, it's not really a mystery at all to who it's uh you definitely know it's annabelle um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely true. a slow burn more of like your paranormal slow burns um where you got like a long like build up to get to like when it starts getting good but once it does get good it's fucking awesome the whole rest of the movie so i mean oh, yeah. you can't hate it you know and the thing i think that really creeped me out with this is that it had a similar story to insidious because here you see this young couple they barely had their baby and everything and she's a doll collector like um i know must all of us horror fans i mean we collect you know various different you know figures dolls masks of course me with masks um oh, she, yeah. Gets, yeah. she gets this creepy doll and she's like oh my god this is the doll i wanted and it, it's kind of cool how they play off on that because it's like okay was annabelle like an actual toy line doll or was it just like a custom doll and they they were very scarce on giving like a whole lot of the origin story, even though this was an origin movie. They still had a lot of mysteries, and it's yeah, like what yeah, John they <laughs> talked about that in the second well the second one released, but the last one we did the uh, Annabelle creation. Yeah, but the dad of the uh, girl there, he was a toy or doll maker, and the Annabelle doll, I believe, was like one out of a hundred or something. But I don't know if he ever made any more. He might have been the only one because his daughter died right after he made this one. Yeah. But <laughs> kind of strange how it goes to do because in the first Annabelle, there's three of them to the set. And I guess this one was so rare to find. Like, she couldn't find it nowhere, and her husband ends up finding it for her. And it just kind of really fucks her whole life up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're telling me, man. Like like I said, it, it felt like insidious because here the dad's at work, the mom's at home with the baby, and they start seeing things move. They start hearing things and shit. Very similar to it. I think the scene that really got to me where, like, th this is where they did really good on the tension part that carried over into Annabelle creation. You know something was coming up, but you didn't know what it was. And you could feel the music just like, woo, 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 woo. And then all of a sudden, like, boom like it just hits you with everything like what the fuck was that you know yeah um this film it had a lot of jump scares 
but it had predictable ones. And then they had some that were really good that that you couldn't predict. Um, and also, too, what I liked about this, it was a full on supernatural film. They knew it was something wrong in the house. They figured out it was the doll. And what I thought was cool is that they actually brought in a priest and everything. And the yeah. whole storyline was like, OK, we know it's this doll. Let's try and see what we can do with it. And, uh, you know, it just the, the story was really great how they took it to a turn with different twists here and there. And just like uh, Annabelle Creation, this one really didn't have like actors that were well known, but they knocked it out of the park in this one, too. I was really surprised on that. Yeah, yeah they definitely did. And uh, to go along with what you were saying about uh, being similar to Insidious, it definitely was because in Insidious you had the further, which is full of like demons and all kinds of spirits. And with Annabelle, it's not in like a different realm or anything like that, but she does draw in all kinds of demons. So it's very similar in that aspect. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's the thing where it got to me because I told you before, man, like Insidious scared the fuck out of me. Um, Animal Creation scared me, and throughout the whole film, like you said, it's a slow burn, but when you see certain scenes, and I think it was where she's in the laundry room at her apartment complex or whatever, or she's like in a yeah. basement or something, and all of a sudden she sees Annabelle like laying down on the floor, and then all of a sudden Annabelle's standing up, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then, you know, <laughs> they show like all the lights flashing, and then you see the demon like holding Annabelle, then pull to the side, and you see his eye, and I was like, holy fuck! Wow! Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, the demon he was like all black and like just very similar, like Insidious. Besides that one was like Darth Maul. Yeah. But but it, it was it was good, man. Like the way how they put that whole makeup because this is the first time that you actually see these different demons that Annabelle attracts, and that that's what makes this film so special was that it showed the potential of what it could be as far as like starting off a franchise. And I think that was done on purpose where they would explain some things, but leave a lot of things out. And they did that purposely because then turn, they turn around and did Annabelle creation. And you don't see it too many in movies now, at least at that time. But now everything's a prequel. Um, yeah. But Annabelle ended up leading off into uh, The Conjuring. And you would think, OK, well, that's the end of the Annabelle series, I guess. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> they turned around and did Annabelle creation. Which ended up being a prequel where they talk about, okay, how did Annabelle the doll get possessed with demons? Which was really cool. Um, yeah, it was basically I, like the um, the origin story and everything. Yeah, like the OG story of like how it happened. And they went even darker than what this one is. And what I thought was crazy is that they uh, the priest in this film, you see him later on in the Conjuring universe. Yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, the. Curse of La Llorona. Yeah. Oh, man, dude. Like, I, when I saw him in that film, I go, holy shit. No way. This is a fucking Conjuring Universe film. Yeah, eventually we'll be getting to that one also. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, I'm, I got to be back for that one. Please bring Annabelle over there, too. I'll come in my veil and everything. We'll scare the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah, dude. Yeah, but Annabelle, um... What comes after Annabelle will be The Conjuring. Oh, yeah, The Conjuring, man. Oh, you know, it, it's it's so cool how one movie could start a thread and then you start this whole different timeline of things. And that's what's great about this film, because it really put a lot on the map. I mean, the numbers will tell you one thing and then the critics and people that review this film, they'll tell you another. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Everyone can say what they like about it, you know, whether you love it or hate it. But the numbers don't lie. I mean, they made this movie with seven million dollars max, and then they turn around and yeah. got two hundred fifty-eight million. So that tells you that, like, they have a whole franchise with this. And then with the yeah, ending, the oh yeah, dude, for sure. And I think the ending was like one of the best twists for me of this film because you know, towards the ending. Annabelle's going crazy, super strong. And then you see the priest comes back and out of the blue, the priest gets possessed. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like now he's turning into Annabelle. Yeah. And then he sacrifices himself carrying Annabelle and jumps off the roof and then splat. And you think that's the end of it. Well, see what happened was, uh, was the priest is trying to take Annabelle into the church because he believes that, um, 
being in like a holy place to be harder for the demons to get to Annabelle. Uh, but he doesn't make it inside the church because some spirit somehow like makes him go like flying through the air. He gets like injured, ends up in the hospital. I don't remember seeing him sacrifice himself because later in the film, the friend of the girl um, is there and um, they basically, the husband ends up showing up at the house and stopping her from killing herself. But the friend of hers grabs Annabelle and jumps out the window and kills herself. Oh, that's where I got it mixed up. Okay. Okay. But yeah, but you I see the priest, like somehow he's not in the hospital and he's like possessed. I don't know how that happened because he was just in the hospital. So, that was a little mixed up to how he was in two places at once. I don't know. Yeah, and see, and, and that was the trip for me because I would have thought they would include him later on in the Conjuring universe, at least at the time when I saw it, because I'm like, okay, that, that doesn't make sense how he's at two different places. And the fact that he's a priest, but he got possessed, you know, so he's been tainted. <laughs> yeah. um, I would have thought he would have came in in some way, like in Conjuring 2, and then when Conjuring 2 came out and it was a whole different storyline where it follows the Warrens, um, that really kind of like put light onto it. Like, oh, man, they're not going to go back to it. And then La Llorona shows up with him. And I was just like, holy shit, dude, like this is going to be pretty cool. And what I thought was even an uh, even cooler twist to this is that the way the film ends is that Annabelle ends up being at an antique shop. This little old lady buys it and ends up giving it to the nursing students that you see later on that leads into the first conjuring. Yes. That's yeah. right. Yeah, they do uh, mention that in the film. So they mentioned a couple of um, nurses and uh, that's exactly what happens with the conjuring where you first hear about Annabelle. Yeah. And you know, with this film, this is one of those films that if you got time and you want to see the origin story of something, I, I suggest watching it. If it's something that you are like, you want to get straight to the point and everything, um, I suggest probably check out the Annabelle creation or one of the other Conjuring films because out of the whole Conjuring series, this is one of the one that has that real slow burn and it's going to be at least halfway into the movie before you start seeing all the stuff of how it explains and everything, how it builds up. But you need that in the movie to like as a prequel to complete the sequels. Yeah, yeah, the prequel being uh, Annabelle creation. That mm -hmm. one like it, like shows you everything and this one's like it's really good, but yeah, like you were saying, it's very slow burn. It leads up into the story more and more, but yeah. you can just tell how it all like matches up with the Conjuring universe. It's just, it's just really oh, yeah. cool how they do that with all these movies. Yeah, they they take everything into account with the writing because this one you had a different director too. It wasn't James Wan. James Wan he actually produced it. This was written by Gary Duberman, who wrote actually Annabelle Creation after this. And then you had John R. Linetti, who directed. And it kind of had that vibe where it was too many hands in the cookie jar with some of the scenes. But then yeah. you could see that there was a lot of different winks from different angles that would be shot like how James Wan would do it. But what I thought was really cool was the music. Because the music was done by jo Joseph Bashira, who's the – basically, he's the lipstick demon or the red demon in Insidious. But he's also the musician. Okay. <laughs> And when he did this music, I go, holy shit, okay. And it's still got that same vibe as Conjuring with that music, the tear where it's like that slow, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Um, and they did really good on this, man, because like he, he's a great musician. But uh, the music, I think, was on point. The acting was on point. If I have to rate this film as the whole out of the franchise, I'd give it about a three stars out of five. And the only reason why I give it a three out of five is because you got to have a lot of, you know, slow stuff to build up to talk about. And then I give it a three because, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's great. But you have to be a fan of like slow horror films. Yeah. Yeah, I agree uh, with basically everything you said. I mean, the acting was great. The effects are awesome. But for this one, um, I'd give it a seven out of ten, which is basically the same thing you were saying with a three out of five. Hell yeah, that's it right there. Throw it up, Annabelle. You got a 7 out of 10, baby. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm dying. Oh, my God, dude, I'm freaking dying. Oh, man. And uh, she didn't wink at me this time, so I, I think we're good, man. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, we should be. 
Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next time to talk about The Conjuring. Oh, definitely. I can't wait for that one, man. Oh, yeah, me either. Awesome movie. Hell yeah. All right, man. We'll see you guys later. Take care.